Well, earlier on we said we're going to take you to a trip of time and space. Now we take you back in time, back in time, way, way back, 400 years AD. That's during Qing Dynasty. And during that time, a most beautiful, touching love story took place. Our story begins in South China. There's a young girl named Zhu Ying Tai. She was a girl, so she could not go to school. In that time, education was only for boys. She, dis she disguised herself as a boy in order to be able to go to school. There, she met a boy named Liang Shanbo. She fell in love with him, but he didn't know she was a girl. Eventually, when they parted ways, she went home, and he later on came to realize that she was a girl and went on to call on her. But by that time, she was already betrothed to another. Eventually, Yang Shanpo died. When Zhu Yinkai went to visit his grave, the ground miraculously split open. A thunderstorm rolled in. She jumped into the grave. The ground closed again, and the thunderstorm rolled away as magically as it had come. From the grave spread two beautiful butterflies. Well, as you can tell, this is a uh, love story. The theme of love is certainly universal. There's no culture, there's no country that does not celebrate love. But I would also say that this is a very Chinese story through and through. You know, given this uh, unequal educational opportunities between girls and boys in the old days, an arranged marriage. And, and it's also unique in the sense that uh, the, it, the, the, the power of love is, is, is just a tremendous, right? If you think about great love stories in the world, you think of uh, the story of Romeo and Juliet, right? And then where does love end? Love ends together with the end of the lover's life. Well, this Chinese love story lasts a lot longer. Love does not die. Love should not die. Love cannot die. Love will always survive. In this story, love in fact transcends death and transforms lives. So if love is not possible in this life, it will happen in the next life. So in the story, we also see this sort of deeply embedded Chinese notion of afterlife in a, in a beautiful and poetic way. Uh, this music is also very unique in its musical in instrumentation because this is the first and so far still the best expression of a great Chinese story in the form of a Western instrument. Uh, the performers today are a group of students from again the Center for Chinese Learning at, at Stony Brook. They will play the beginning section and the theme music of the violin concerto under the baton of Karen Abramoff. Violin soloist is Ariel Liang. Please欣赏小提琴协奏曲《梁祝》，由实习中文学校的部分学生表演。